Hi everyone. Today I'm doing a mock interview with Dan, uh, which we have done before, and I wanted to get into more of the uh, kind of surroundings around uh, what we're trying to go on about uh, system design and machine learning interviews. Uh, and so Dan, who needs no introduction, is a general expert in this field, and I think uh, talking to him more about uh, these problems uh, will really kind of open up uh, what things that are really good for uh, interviewing and just general data science as well, right? Uh, so Dan, thanks for being here again. <laughs> totally, yeah, glad to do it. <laughs> yeah, so today um, I wanted to talk about a kind of recommendations interview question and so we can kind of dive right into it. Uh, but uh, the question is, uh, so let's say that you're basically a machine learning engineer um, on YouTube, right? And this is uh, your task with basically building the YouTube uh, video recommendation algorithm. How would you go about and start like this uh, process for building it? Uh, yeah, so I do have the advantage of having heard this question before. Uh, and thinking about it, I think it's, uh, it's just such a huge scope. I mean, YouTube with billions of videos, billions of or millions of users and accounts. Um, they certainly have a difficult task ahead of them. How do I recommend the right video to the right user at the right time in the right context? Yes. Um, and so I think there's like multiple approaches. There's the idea of, you know, starting, what if YouTube weren't as big as it is right now and it started small and we had maybe a hundred videos and 10 users. And then how do we scale that up to the YouTube of 2020? And I think another approach is like, hey, it's YouTube 2020 and we need to build the recommendation engine from scratch to be able to work across the entire corpus of, of content on yeah. YouTube. And I think both of those are worthy of, of, of discussing and maybe meet in the middle a little bit about the approaches here. Uh, but I'm just gonna kind of brainstorm uh, the various ideas I have around this. Uh, so initially, uh, if you wanna do this on a small data set, uh, how would you recommend the right video to the right user. Well, what you can do is you can start with uh, just saying, okay, what do users initially think about the videos they've seen? So you can see uh, user A saw video number one and watched 100% uh, of it, a 15 minute video watched all of it. And then user B also watched video number one and watched all of it. Okay, so now we can maybe reason that user A and user B uh, maybe have similar tastes. And so that might be used to predict whether a video that user A watched, uh, perhaps video two, uh, watched in its entirety. Now YouTube might recommend that video number two to user B because, well, we've determined that user B is similar to user A mm -hmm. um, by some model that I can get into in a bit. And we've determined that user A likes video number two so let's recommend video number two to that uh, paired user. Uh, and similarly, if a, if a user doesn't like a video, then another user similar to them, we might not recommend that video to them. So is this technique the, uh, the collaborative filtering technique where it's based on exactly, yeah. general neighbors, right? And uh -huh. so the definition as I know it is that uh, users who watch the same thing would likely uh, like the s similar types of movies and so uh, or videos, right? So you recommend the same videos that um, they might have liked and then users who are mm -hmm. inherently themselves the same, like demographically or something might like the same videos as well, right? So it's based on activity and then also attributes. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can take a number of uh, features to put into that model of uh, collaborative filtering, user-user collaborative filtering. Uh, it, we could take the demographics of the user, their age and locale. And we could also take uh, what, they've, what they've been watching and not only what they've been watching like historically, did they like this video at some point in time, but also weighting more heavily what they've seen recently. And yeah. I've certainly noticed for myself, if I'm watching a series of videos in one topic, well, guess what? The next video it recommends to me is gonna be along that topic. Gotcha. And I'm sure there's other features going into that, but I think it's for the most part uh, comparing like for this, you know, fat corner of the recommendation system, yeah. uh, it's going to be comparing, Hey, this user liked this other video 
and I like the same things as user does, so let's recommend it to them. Gotcha. Um, okay. Now so I am a, sorry. This is on a the small scale, right? And so uh, this is like YouTube when it's very beginning, right? And so um, when you were kind of jumping into it, uh, I guess one thing I wanted to add was uh, how does YouTube then kind of start this prediction algorithm if they don't like have any data to like start out with, right? Because um, we're assuming that um, maybe this is like the very first recommendation ever. And so like, can you even show anything or uh, like basically how would you ever just show anything at all if uh, you don't really know what any activity from any of the users uh, is in our data set at all? Sure. Um, so uh, in most of my experience, uh, the, the builder of the system is lucky to have, you know, a corpus of data, like a hundred users have watched these hundred videos, mm -hmm. but if that's not available, uh, perhaps you could use uh, some sort of abstraction or a, a reference or an approximation that'll be like, well, you know, this is a popular video or this is a recently released video or just have some other metric that'll say, this is what we're going to start with recommend recommending videos to these users. And then we can shift more towards a user's taste based on how well that initial model performs. Gotcha. And you could even use a, a constantly live updating model to receive feedback as it goes. Say, hey, we predicted this video and we were pretty sure you would like it, but you didn't watch it. Okay, now we're gonna update our features of this model. Uh, and the next time not recommend a video that we thought you would like for the same reason. Gotcha, okay, cool. Uh, awesome. So uh, the next point that you're going at before I cut you off. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I am a huge fan uh, when building a model like or a system like this to have different models that work to lab together collaboratively as kind of like a symphony uh, that will say, hey, this model uh, from user user uh, collaborative filtering says that you will pre you will predict you will like the video. And this other model from item item or like comparing videos to each other rather than comparing users to each other, that will predict that this video is similar to another video that you liked, not comparing across users, but comparing across videos and therefore recommend it to you for that reason. Okay. And so that's uh, a completely different uh, parallel perhaps vector we could attack on to say uh, yeah this video is similar to this other video you've seen based on uh, the features of the video perhaps the uh, hierarchy of the uh, video's content creator or the tags of the hashtags of the video mm -hmm. or uh, the release date or other things like that could be used to compare even if that video has doesn't have many views yet and we can't compare it to a similar user similar to you gotcha okay so uh given this like system if we were to scale it out and let's say that we're now focusing the problem on the youtube of uh 2020 right um mm -hmm. how would the kind of problem scope change and uh how would you like begin to approach the problem because uh mm -hmm. now it's like let's say that you just joined youtube and this is like basically your task with building like the new, uh, you know, YouTube recommendation system plus algorithm. How would you kind of start from that? Yeah. Uh, so I want to be careful with how I present this because the first thing I want to share is interesting, but not necessarily the final solution. Okay. Uh, so when initially thinking about this, you, you take a, a user feature vector and condense that down to one dimension and now you have a you have a subset of all the videos on youtube and i'll go into more detail on how we construct which videos we'll compare it with and that subset on uh videos we will condense that down into a uh, one one dimension matrix uh vector as well and so now we have our output our prediction of will this single user like or should they be recommended this single video we have uh, a one by one multiplication now if we want to scale that out to say hey will this single user like any of these videos in an array if it like if we want to compare it to n videos now we have that one user times an n uh length n ve n vectors into a now a 2d matrix yeah okay well sure. now what if we uh, want to speed that up a little bit we can do uh, comparing a number of users to a number of videos. 
And that will save us time because now, uh, you know, we're multiplying a single, two matrices together once to get the output for a bunch of users and a bunch of videos. But the downside is we still have to perform all those uh, computations. Uh, one thing I've found that wasn't initially obvious to me, but I think it's worth experimenting with to measure performance, is that it is uh, using modern day GPUs or uh, you can use a clever strategy when multiplying these two matrices uh, to get much faster results, at least than I would expect. Uh, so multiplying two matrices is faster than doing each operation n times, if that makes sense. It's faster to, to combine the problem and do it all at once and you're amortizing the time across all of your users rather than doing it one at a time. Okay, so uh, I guess taking a step back here, um, so we're assuming that there are now, let's say, uh, multi, like millions of users, right? And then millions of videos now, right? Um, and so mm -hmm. I guess yeah. within the frame of the scope is, uh, is this um, potentially the problem for where a new user joins a platform and then sees like the YouTube page where they recommended you uh, that like eight by two like kind of YouTube panel of different videos you can select? Mm -hmm. Or is this more like uh, you've watched a video and then you get recommended like another one that auto plays um, immediately? So I guess in terms of like figuring out the scope, um, I guess that's probably my first question is um, uh, which one does that formula kind of apply to or the matrix multiplication? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's going to be more applicable to when you've already seen a video, you've, you've been using YouTube for a while, you're a user who has been, and you have an established, uh, you know, corpus of this is what, these are the types of videos I like, these are the types of videos I don't like, don't interact with, and therefore you're able to construct a, not quite unique, or a distinct uh, 1D user vector. So that way uh, we can actually save time by, multi by combining many users who have also spent a lot of time on YouTube. And now we're saying, okay, for user A, do they like video X? For user B, do they like video Y? And doing it all at the same time. The opposite side of that problem, of uh, we got a bunch of new users and most of them don't have a lot of, uh, well, they, they haven't generated the data for YouTube. YouTube doesn't know quite yet uh, what kind of videos they like. Um, that's, I'd say, a different kind of problem because then you don't have so much data. So what you could is recommend them videos that new users tend to like, or you could just say, hey, these are the most popular videos across all of them. That's maybe good enough. Um, I think those are different approaches, but they don't solve the same meat of the problem as what I'm suggesting of combining multiple users and multiple videos in order to amortize your time to uh, to perform one calculation, it's a huge calculation, you're multiplying some pretty big matrices, um, but you're saving time by not doing it one by one. Gotcha, so does that mean that each user then gets bucketed into like a bigger group of users that has that like similar preferences so we can reduce the dimension or is it? Uh... Uh -huh. uh, so that's the next thing I wanna get into, the sure. what I'll call more of a final solution because uh, in this initial case, we're assuming we, we can't bucket things yet. It's just saying, hey, we have some raw data. Bucket, bucketing is not an easy problem. So maybe we could iteratively then add bucketing to this as another uh, vector of attack. Uh, okay. If our first, our first formulations were user, user, uh, collaborative filtering, and our second iteration, our second component of this uh, multi-level multi model is uh, item, item, collaborative filtering. And then uh, the third, uh, the third uh, generation technique I want to uh, point out is, is what you mentioned, reducing dimensions, dimensionality of cardinality of the user vector. Okay. Uh, so you can perform uh, perhaps unsupervised uh, k-means clustering to say, hey, this is, uh, this is the type of user that likes uh, videos about movies. And this is the type of user that likes videos about sports. And you can cluster them into two separate buckets. Similar uh, on, a t on a lower dimensional space than the, um, than the entire user vector. Uh, similarly, actually, it turns out you can uh, reduce the cardinality on and map onto the same domain uh, the vector, uh, the feature vector of the videos, of the items that you're classifying. So that way, you can actually take the proximity of a user 
to a video without having to compare it to any additional models. Each user outputs uh, is now reduced to a lower dimension that is on the same space as the item or as the video. And therefore you can compute the distance and you can compute the likelihood of that this user will like this video just based on distance. It becomes a little more complicated when you want to take into account uh, recency of other videos they've seen. If I'm watching a lot of, you know, silly, funny compilations or whatever, uh, then it'll be more likely to suggest that one next. Uh, so it might take a, uh, a time displaced series of, oh, yesterday Dan liked these kind of videos and today he likes these kind of videos. So this is how we're going to weight them differently in the uh, sorting algorithm. Okay. So I guess uh, going back there, because I think I got lost for a bit. Um, when you're thinking about the dimensionality, is this basically reducing uh, a person's like users or features into like some sort of vector, uh, kind of in the way that like word to vec works in uh, natural language processing, where you take like a sentence um, or a word and you like basically reduce it into like the similarity between uh, different words, or is it more so mm -hmm. just taking like a uh, or like I guess like yeah, is that kind of a similar idea there? Um, yeah, it's definitely a similar idea. I'm hesitant to, com to compare them directly just because word to vec is so, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. And I'm sure it contains a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that I'm overlooking, but it's just, uh, so not only are we reducing cardinality, reducing cardinality is, is kind of a bonus of this process. Uh, the, the main thing I wanna get at is that we're mapping the user vector and the item vector onto the same space so that they can be compared directly just using a Cartesian distance formula. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes more sense, I think. And so uh, what would make them, I guess, comparably similar and what would make them like comparably distant from each other? Uh, what would affect, yeah. them, I guess? Yeah. Uh, it would be completely tastes of the user and categorization of the item. Um, uh, just to back up a little bit, I thought of an example. So I think uh, comparing uh, comp comparing this to word to vec would be similar to uh, mapping a word in one language to a vec that maps to the same space as the same word in a different language. And you can compare uh, whether or not they are indeed the same word by uh, comparing the proximity of those two words onto the word to vec mapped space. Gotcha. If okay. that makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, so now rolling forward, uh, can you remind me again what the, your, 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 your ask is, your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically now that we've gone this uh, kind of like general um, comparison, are we kind of like finalized? Are we using that as like the final way to compute? Um, would it scale towards the fact of like uh, working for like all these users that have new videos loading up? Um, would it work for um, our algorithm, I guess, also in terms of... Um, YouTube's like kind of like goal as well in terms of, uh, you know, producing the best content for the user. Um, are there any other considerations mm -hmm. that we have to take into place or just general edge cases that might uh, come up? Yeah, there's uh, two or three that specifically come to mind. Uh, so uh, first of all, this is that uh, the reduction I've done, the, I've, I've certainly simplified it. There's a lot of edge cases that, you know, come up as you, as you performing this. Uh, one that comes to mind is what you mentioned about a new user, like we don't have a lot of data on this person. Well, how do we generate content or how do we recommend content for them? Yep. Uh, but the, one of the biggest problems in my mind is how do you do this on a billion videos? You can't really map a billion videos onto a Cartesian plane and another several hundred million users user profiles onto that same plane and then try to do uh, nearest neighbor algorithms, that's not gonna scale very well. Yep. Uh, so one thing you could do, and there's many ways to do this, uh, is filtering what videos get, um, get generated as candidates to even be possibly uh, put into this real time function. I wanna get recommendations now, so yep. I'll, I'll say, okay, well, this video is about sports. Is sports even remotely close to this user's profile? And if so, then okay, we'll put the bucket of sports videos that 
hopefully we conveniently have uh, somewhere accessible by hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, that map is going to be super complicated, but I think that could be the way to do it. And now once we've filtered, not only do we have a domain of sports videos, let's say, we could even filter. Uh, I understand that just random selection uh, has performed quite well in generating uh, the recommendations for, for any system. Let's, let's continue relating it to YouTube. Uh, so if we just randomly sample the newest sports videos that have been released on YouTube in the past six hours and plug a portion of those into our model, then we're going to get some pretty good results in a lot better time than if we put the entire library in or perform an initial calculation uh, on, on request load. Um, you know, just reducing that sample size is going to be crucial for getting this to be performance at all. Okay. And so let's assume that we have like these videos also tagged, right? Like I know users can tag these videos as sports. Um, there's probably like a channel classifier as well, where we classify mm -hmm. each person's channel into like several categories as well. And so we have all these like vectors floating around, right? Um, and so once we filtered it down in terms of the recommendation, um, how do we decide, uh, I guess, what other features do we care about um, in terms of uh, bringing forward uh, like the newest video? Like, uh, Cause I know like we don't want any like mm. random sports video, right? Like if I, you know, upload a picture, like a video of my niece, you know, hitting a baseball, obviously that probably won't be like mm -hmm. what people want for like most of their recommendations. Right. And so I'm assuming that there has to be some sort of like general heuristic tier also when it comes to recommending like the next video um, that uh, is mm -hmm. maybe built off of a model or just built off of general, like, um, kind of heuristics yeah uh, so that was uh, exactly the very next thing I was going to mention uh, so I I would recommend doing this in two layers having a first uh, initial pass filter that will say hey from the entire corpus of videos of billions we're gonna select say maybe a hundred or two hundred that match the requirements we're looking for mm -hmm. uh, and maybe those 100 to 200 will include that video of your niece hitting uh, hitting the baseball and maybe it'll include, uh, you know, the currently trending video that is much more likely to actually get, uh, get bubbled up onto the user's queue. But mm -hmm. we're going to return them both just the same at the end of this initial pass filter. Maybe we'll attach scores to it, but that's not so necessary because the second filter, uh, the second uh, layer in this model uh, will be a, what I'll we'll call a ranking model. And that'll be more rigorous and use the same techniques that I've mentioned before. Um, but it'll actually have, it'll be a much lower corpus. So you'll be able to perform the more intense calculations in a performant amount of time on a much lower number of videos, a hundred or 200. And then it can say, okay, uh, we will, now we have these hundred videos, let's cut maybe 50 of them from the list at all. And then the next 50, we can actually attach a number to them so they can easy easily be sorted where that number is the likelihood that you will watch the video. Uh, and something I actually learned uh, while uh, while poking around uh, is that YouTube apparently wants to not necessarily maximize the, the top video or top videos it recommends. Uh, I understand it doesn't want to necessarily maximize the likelihood that you'll like the video, but it wants to maximize your time spent watching the video. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 15 minute video and a five minute video, it knows you'll like the five minute video more but you'll probably watch them both in its entirety, it'll bubble up that 15 minute video uh, higher up the queue. Yep. And I understand a lot of YouTube content creators are, or have been, I don't know, complaining about longer videos get bubbled up on YouTube's algorithm more frequently. Well, it does specifically on that ranking step, as I understand it, but not in the filtering step. So sure, it'll be recommended to you, even if it's a short video, but it'll just be much lower down the queue. Gotcha. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And I think it kind of brings up more of why YouTube is trying to, uh, push content because I think, uh, is there some sort of then metric in which they are finding that like the more, um, videos or the longer amount of time that you spend watching a video, 
uh, the, you know, the longer that you might stay on the platform for, or come mm -hmm. back to the platform later. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's the case, but that kind of makes sense for how much uh, money YouTube could make over time. Uh, given that, you know, if it only recommended like, you know, 10 second, like TikTok videos, then maybe you're going to quit after mm -hmm. like 10 videos versus like one long video that's 20 minutes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's a measure. It's one metric for engagement.